you might have a sin hiding in your heart that is disguised as a virtue. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and today I want to talk to you about humility. Now, humility is a virtue. A virtue is like a good thing. So like love is a virtue. Kindness is a virtue. Honesty is a virtue. Humility is a virtue. Humility means to be humble, and that means to not think too highly of yourself, right? To be humble means to know that you're not perfect. It means that you know that you're not better than everybody else. To be humble really means to know who God is and who you are and who other people are and how you relate to God and to others. And I think that a lot of us, especially after we become a Christian and we want to live for God, a lot of us will try to look in our own hearts for for stuff that is wrong, stuff that we could be doing better. So like we might find in our hearts that we hate someone. And we know from the Bible that God says not to hate people. And so we might work on that and try to fill our hearts with love instead of hate. Now the truth is there are a lot of sins in the world that we can kind of disguise in our own hearts as good things, as virtues, right? Like people are really good at making the bad stuff that they do seem, at least in their own minds, like it's a good thing. But there's one virtue in particular that I think even people who are trying really, really hard to do what God wants them to do, to live for God, this one virtue that might actually be a sin, at least the way that they are living it out. Humility is a virtue. Being humble is a good thing. But there are a couple of sins that disguise themselves as humility. That can be really hard to spot if you don't know what you're looking for. Like you might know there's a problem, but you might not know where the problem is coming from because it's so good at disguising itself. You know, at my house a while ago, a couple weeks ago, there was this stink, this bad, bad smell in our house, and we could not figure out what was making this bad smell. It was coming from the kitchen somewhere, and we could not figure it out. You know, like we moved the, we moved the fridge even. We were trying to find this smell, bad, bad smell to get rid of it. And we could not figure it out. And after a long time of searching, it turned out to be an apple. We had a, we had a bunch of apples in a bowl and one of the apples right on top, it looked like a really good apple, but the bottom of the apple was really like extra, specially nasty. It was all rotted and there it was, it was bad. Like just thinking about it is, is kind of hard to think about it without feeling sick. And so we got rid of those apples and we washed the bowl that they were in and we got some new apples and everything's fine. But like, that's what, that's the way it is with humility sometimes, you know, like that apple, it looked so good, but it was so bad. And with humility, there's really a couple ways that, that, that virtue can go really sour really fast. You know, on the one hand, humility or what looks like humility can actually be pride, the exact opposite. I see a lot of people, and I have this problem too sometimes, where I'm like, oh yes, I am so humble. I'm the most humblest person in the whole wide world, and no one is more humble than Douglas. Look at all these other silly boys and girls. They're not as humble as Douglas is. Right? That's, that's like, obviously wrong. And I say it's obviously wrong, but it's only obviously wrong if you are looking right at it. Right? Like you're looking at it from the proper angle, from the outside looking in. Like if we see somebody acting that way, it's pretty easy for us to say, yeah, buddy, that's not humility. That's pride. And so a good rule of thumb is if you think you're better than everyone else, you're not being humble. Even if the thing you think you're better at than everyone else is being humble, right? Maybe especially that. And that sort of thing can be easy to spot in other people, but it's hard to spot in our own hearts. You know, we might like smell the stink of it, so to speak, but we might not know what the problem is. But another way that sin disguises itself as humility is self-hatred. And the sad truth is that there are a lot of Christians who think that they need to hate themselves. You know, they're like, I keep messing up. I'm so, so dumb. Man, I cannot believe how foolish Douglas is. I, I am the worst. I'm so sorry, guys. You guys have to deal with me. I'm the worst person ever. I just, I, I hate myself when I think about who I am, right? Like that's not humility. And the truth is, it's pretty hard to love others if you can't also love yourself. Now, obviously, you don't want to love yourself like too much. You don't want to put yourself up on a pedestal where you're like, I'm better than everyone else. Or you think, 
I only care about what I want. I don't care what other people want. That's not okay. But it's also not okay to think of yourself as being anything less than what God thinks of you. And God loves you. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, Douglas, you said that God hates sin, and I have done some bad stuff. I am right now doing bad stuff, and so God must hate me. Yeah, listen, God hates sin. He does, but he loves you. God doesn't have to love the things that you do in order to love you. And if you're doing something that God hates, you know, one of the big reasons he hates it is because it is hurting you and or other people. That's what sin does. It ruins things. It hurts people. And God doesn't want that for you. But I think that there are a lot of people, especially a lot of Christians, unfortunately, that, that think that if they sin, the thing that they deserve is to punish themselves, right? The punishment that they deserve is self-hatred. And so they're like, I've done wrong, and in order to pay for that, I need to hate myself. But that's totally wrong. Listen, if you've done wrong, the punishment that you deserve is an eternity apart from God, eternal death. But Jesus paid the penalty for your sin. And if you believe in Jesus, you don't have to pay that penalty. You can have eternal life. Now, you might still have to deal with some of the consequences that come from sin. Because like I said, sin ruins things. But the punishment that you deserve for not doing what is right is not to hate yourself. The punishment is much worse than that. But it's also much better because you don't have to pay it. Jesus paid it. For you. And when you hate yourself, you, you kind of make light of the sacrifice that Jesus made for you, right? It's sort of like not taking seriously the, the big and incredible gift that Jesus gave you with his own death. And another thing I want to point out about, you know, hating yourself is that if you are a Christian and you are always like saying bad things about yourself, you might be accidentally teaching other people that God hates you. And if God hates a Christian, then he's certainly going to hate, you know, worldly sinners who aren't Christians. But he doesn't. God loves them, and he loves you. And we need to accept that. And it's hard. It's hard to accept that. But it's true. God loves us, and we should love ourselves also. You know, first greatest commandment is love the Lord your God. But the second is love your neighbor as yourself. You ever thought about that as two different commands in the second greatest commandment? We often think of it as love God, love others. Those are the two greatest commandments. But the second greatest commandment says love others as you love yourself. It's sort of like three. Love God, love others, love you. Anything less than that is going to be like a, a stinky, not good humility, a false humility, a sin. So my challenge to you guys today is that you would be humble. Don't think too highly of yourself and don't think too low of yourself. Recognize that you are not better than other people. But the fact that you're not better than other people doesn't mean that you're worse than other people. God loves you and God loves them. God loves us. And if we can remember that and live it out in our lives, that is true humility. Hey guys, I hope you liked this video. And yeah, I really hope that you know that God loves you and you don't have to hate yourself. And in fact, you have to not hate yourself. I think that a lot of us have a hard time with that. Like, like there's this thing in our head where it's like, the more I hate myself, the more holy that is. But that's not true. That's like a stinky false virtue. That's not humility. And actually in a roundabout way, it's kind of pride. So I really do hope that you remember that you are not better than other people, but you are loved, and you do not deserve to hate yourself. If you've done something wrong, it's very good for you to try to not do that wrong thing. It's very good for you to, to recognize that you've done something wrong, and that might be a really painful thing to recognize that you've done something wrong and do something about it, but you don't have to hate yourself, and you're not supposed to hate yourself. You're supposed to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. That is true humility.